welcome back to my channel so in today's video I'm going to be doing a first impressions video on the new Anastasia subculture palette this is a very controversial palette controversial 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 palette um, and I wanted to get my little paws on this and get my own opinion about this palette so if you would like to see my first impressions on this palette then just keep on watching and please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already so let's just jump right in so if you do not know what the subculture palette looks like it looks like this this is just the outer packaging but this has been very talked about on YouTube. I have never been so scared to try a palette in my life until I've seen reviews on this palette. I'm just going to go ahead and jump into the look that I'll be creating. Again, this is my first time trying this palette. I know from other people how it performs, but like for me, I've never used it. So here's what the inside looks like. Like, as you can see here, you, they are not even swatched or anything. When I first got it, I opened it up and I'm like, wow, this is just such a beautiful palette. I didn't want to swatch it. I didn't want to use it for anything. I wanted to film this first impressions for you guys. So I did go ahead and prime my eyelids already and I took my Milani eyeshadow primer. And I did apply it from lid all the way to my brow bone. The Milani eyeshadow primer is just one of my favorite eyeshadow primers that I use. Like I'm pretty much almost done with this primer. I use that eyeshadow primer for high end and also affordable shadows. So I know how it performs. But the first shadow I'm going to be taking from this palette is this one right here. And it's called Dawn. And I'm just going to be using that to set my eyeshadow primer. And already off the bat there is some fallout. I dipped my brush like three times. And I don't know if you guys can tell, but there is some fallout already. But I was probably going to dip into it more until I realized and remembered that this does have a lot of kickback. So I'm just using this shadow to set the eyeshadow primer so I have a good canvas for my shadows to blend nicely. I'm not going to try any new techniques or anything. I'm just going to be doing what I usually do every single day. <laughs> that way I'm not like trying a new technique and then... Like it doesn't work out. But let's see here. I think I'm going to take this shade right here. It's called Roxy. And I'm going to be applying that in my crease with just this fluffy brush. And this is from BH Cosmetics. And there's fallout also on this one as well. And there is some on my brush. It is pretty pigmented. Seems to be blending out okay so far, so good. I have seen reviews on this palette already and I did notice that you do not need to super pack your brush in the shades because already just these two shades, it's already like fallout central. And again, I'm not the type of person, like I'm trying to scrape the color from the side right here so I could use it. These are like really pigmented though. So far you do not need a lot of shadow packed on your brush, like a little bit does go a very long way. So I'm going to take the same fluffy brush and I'm going to dip my little paws into All Star, which is this purpley maroon shade right there. And I'm going to be applying it in the crease as well and this is just going to be like to define it. Um, a little more. Um, I do see that there is a little bit of kickback, but not as much as Roxy was. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Did I just ruin my look? <laughs> like right here. I feel like I messed up already because I can't like blend it out or anything. I'm like really going with the light hand so I could try to blend it out because it looks kind of like it's skipping. I think instead of going like two light um, dips you need to do like one dip and like build it up because uh, I don't know if you saw but I didn't feel like I really dipped into that color. I'm gonna try the other eye and see but I'm just gonna dip it once. Look how much color just that one dip and it was like barely touching the shadow. So let's see again. 
So it looks like it's blending out. So I'm gonna do it again, one small dip. Can you guys see? There's color on my brush, hopefully you guys can tell. And I'm gonna go out here. I'm trying not to like really drag the color. I'm trying to do really lightly, like as lightly as I was dipping into my shadows, I'm like trying to lightly like blend it out in my crease. I just feel like you really need to be really, I'm saying really a lot, but you really need to be careful with these. Like these are so pigmented and they could get wild very quickly. Like this side looks more blended out than this side does. And again, like, take one small dip, blend it out very lightly. Don't really, like, really try to blend it out, like, really lightly with just the tip of your brush to blend it out. It looks good. It looks, it looks, um, blended out. But this side kind of looks a little patchy. Like, I went in too much with the dark, um, all-star shade. It doesn't look crazy, but I just feel like this one's more blended out than this eye is. So the next shade I'm going to be taking is the shade called Electric. This shade right here, and it's like the greenish duochrome shade. And I'm just going to be playing it with my ring finger onto the lid. It feels really smooth and buttery. This is what it looks like. So let's see here. <laughs> the color is really pretty. I'm gonna do the ring finger with this eye. And then I'll try it with a brush on the other eye and see if there's like a difference. This is building up really nicely, like the color is building up. I'm gonna be taking a smaller precise brush and just like blend out the, any harsh lines? Whoa, like, made my crease like shimmery now. So what I'm going to try to do, this is like very dangerous. I'm going to take the all-star shade again, the first shade I applied in my crease, just really lightly. I'm going to take some of the color that's on the actual packaging. I don't even really think I should be adding more to my crease because it's already dark. But you can see kind of some of that shimmer from the lid onto the crease. It doesn't look bad, but... Yeah, you can see it. <laughs> so on this side, I'm going to be taking a brush to apply the lid shade and see if it's different, like the pigmentation and stuff. And I'm just going to be taking this AOA Studio E121 brush, and it's just from the Shop Miss A site. It's not really grabbing any color, like, on my brush. Like, there's rarely any product on here. And it's just kind of making my shadow also like, I don't know how to explain it, but this one right here, can you see how it's just looking like it's pressing it in more by using a brush? Because with my finger, it didn't look that way. I'm trying to stay below the crease, that way I can kind of blend it out and hope there is no glitter or shimmer in my crease. So I feel like you get more pigmentation using your finger, so I'm just going to go finish off the lids with my finger again and applying it and tapping it onto the lids. This color is really pretty. And I'm just gonna be taking that same crease brush I took. This is a Coastal Sense Classic Blending Brush. And I'm just gonna try to blend the crease really lightly, trying not to move the lid shade too much. Let me see here. Yeah. Um. This eye looks way better than this eye. <laughs> the crease, especially the crease. Like For my outer corners, I'm going to be taking my favorite crown brush brush. And it's just kind of like a, like a pinched um, precise brush. And I'm just going to use this for my outer corners. And I'm going to take the shade Rowdy, which is the purple shade right here. And I'm just going to go in once because I'm pretty sure this one is pigmented as well. So again here... There's not that much on my brush, but maybe do it one more time. Okay, I'm just going to go with this. Oh my gosh, 
I thought there was not that much on the brush, but look. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, this doesn't really want to blend out. Um, mm, it's like where I applied it is like where it's going to stay. Like it doesn't want to move anywhere. It's blending out, but it's not moving out. So again, I'm doing one. I don't know guys, I feel like I'm working really hard to blend this out. I'm loving all the colors together though, like all these shades together look really pretty. It's alright, it doesn't look bad. But again, fast dip. <laughs> fast dip. I feel like I'm dipping more on this side to get more color, like, I feel like I can't really see it. But I am going really lightly on this eye too, so that's probably why, because I like barely dipping it in there. I feel like I'm working really hard to <laughs> blend this out. Harder than I usually would with any other palette. Like, so I kind of feel like I need to add more of the all-star shade onto my crease on this side because this side is like really dark compared to this side. So hopefully I don't... I'm going to tap off excess and try to deepen up the crease to kind of match the other side. Even though this side looked a little more blended, but this side just... I need to match the other side, like... And I kind of applied some of my crease shade on out here and I feel like it took off the shade I applied over here. So I'm going to reapply more of the purple shade again out here. It doesn't even look purple. Like I thought it was blue. Like it doesn't look purple anymore. It looks kind of like a mer like a navy color I feel like. It's purple right? Okay so I feel like I lost some of the color that's on my lid so I'm going to go ahead and do and apply some more on my finger and apply it kind of to brighten it a little bit I'm gonna go back with Dawn right here and just apply it in my brow bone whoa I probably shouldn't have done that it's too dark <laughs> so I have the modern renaissance right here and I'm just gonna be taking the lightest shade that's in this palette to my brow bone because that was not good I'm gonna take tempera and hopefully I could lighten this up see how this side is like brighter up here but this side I kind of like messed it up applying dawn yeah, like this side looks brighter than this side does. Dang it. And then I'm going to go in with my fluffy brush and I'm going to take off any excess shadow that I may have. And I'm just going to blend everything out up in my crease to make sure I don't have any harsh lines. Like, you can so tell this is darker than this side, huh? <sighs> Okay, I'm going to finish off the eyes and face and I will be right back to give you guys my review on this palette. So this is the final look. Let's jump into this review. So I am on the Ulta website. I did check on Ulta and Sephora and Ulta actually has two and a half stars on this palette. Um, there's 102 reviews and I did check Sephora as well and that one has three and a half stars with like 900 and something, almost a thousand um, reviews on there. But I wanted to quickly read what the little details on this palette. So it says, Anastasia Beverly Hills Subculture Eyeshadow Palette is an essential eyeshadow collection with 14 shades featuring grungy mattes and bold metallics with an underground edge. So the benefits are full pigment, easy to blend formula, 14 shades with ultra matte, dual chrome, and metallic finishes. It includes a double-ended brush. 
So it comes in this box right here and this is what it looks like. It's just like the Modern Renaissance box but just different shade. It looks pretty much the same. Um, the only thing I see different is kind of like the logo but other than that they're pretty much similar and then the back as well says so subculture. It has a picture of the eyeshadow palette and also some ingredients on the eyeshadows and then you open up the box and the packaging looks like this. It's the same material as the modern renaissance that little fuzzy palette and then you do get a mirror you get your plastic protective sheet and here is the brush actually it comes with the dual ended brush here i did not use it for this tutorial which i probably should have i don't ever really use the brushes that come in the palette so um this is usually just stays in my palette i don't ever use it but it does come with a fluffy brush and then this packing brush as well so this is what the shades in here look like i'm sure you guys have seen lots of reviews on this palette already and have seen hit and miss videos on this when i first saw the leak on this palette I was like, oh my gosh, this palette's not even pretty, like, I'm not going to pick it up. But then when they actually showed the shades and in better lighting, I was like, oh my gosh, this palette is so beautiful, like, I need to pick it up. And then, um, here comes everybody with their reviews, you know, making, um, videos on this palette and just really saying how they do hate it, how they are really um powdery and so hard to blend and i was very scared i'm like i'm gonna pick it up because i want to try it for myself because i want to have my own opinion about this palette not what other people have told me even though i saw other reviews i still wanted to get this and make a video like again what i feel about the palette so i was like really nervous and scared and i it was I was even thinking about not even trying it out and just returning it because I was really getting influenced by all these bad reviews out there. To my surprise, for the shades that I actually used, I actually like this palette. It's not like super hard to blend out. You just have to really, really, really be careful when you're dipping your brush in there because these shadows are, they're not as tightly pressed like the other Anastasia shadows are so just one dip they're super pigmented and then also and they do have a lot of fallout because they are softly pressed shadows but I actually really like this palette like I like the look that I created this was my guinea pig eye as you guys can tell like the crease was a hot mess um, I tried to match it on this side, but overall, if I went with the light hand like I did with this, I, I feel like this look, I still like this look, but I feel like it would be even better if I actually used the same techniques like I did on this side with this eye. So you might be asking, would I recommend this palette? I would recommend this palette if you have experience with blending shadows. If you are new to makeup, I do not recommend this palette because this is really hard. It was hard for myself to make sure I didn't really like dip my brush a lot and then blending it out it was a little hard for me and I'm not saying I'm an expert or anything like that but it was hard for me to blend the shadow out and make sure it looked semi blended so yes I would recommend this palette if you have experience with makeup like playing with makeup playing with eyeshadows of course it's an eyeshadow palette so if you have experience blending out your eyeshadows this is a thumbs up but if you are new to makeup and you want a new palette to try out i feel like this is going to be kind of hard to really blend it out you guys saw how much i dipped in there i showed you guys one dip i had so much pigment on my eyes it can get very dangerous i like this palette so i am happy i picked it up and i'm definitely going to keep it um, I was going to go to a town that has an old town tomorrow and I was like, I'm going to do a review. If I hate it, I'm just going to take it back tomorrow, but I'm going to keep it. I like it. I'm going to try it out for another week or so and really test it out. But so far, first impressions, I like this palette. Like, yeah, it's really, really pigmented, but it's not as bad as I thought it was from all the other reviews I had seen. I also want to mention, I don't know if it's true, but I have seen a couple reviews here on YouTube where they say that there are two different batches of the subculture. Again, I don't know if it's true, but they say there is a P3 and a P7. And the P7 is the one that's supposed to be better quality than the P3. If you're wondering where you would find the batch number, it's actually in the back of the box and it's right here on top of the logo. 
It's in a black print, so I don't know if you guys can tell, but it's right on top of this logo right here. And mine does say P7 with followed by other numbers. But supposedly, I got a good batch from what I've been watching. I don't know if it's true or not, but that is what I have heard, so... From the Subculture palette and the Modern Renaissance palette, my favorite from the two is actually Subculture. Like, Subculture has more shades that I would use. I like wearing color, so Subculture is actually just a palette that I would gravitate more towards. Like, if you asked me to pick one of the two palettes, like, I would definitely gravitate towards Subculture. So here is the difference between the two. And Subculture was actually supposed to be was made to be a sister palette to the Modern Renaissance. So technically you should be using, you were, you're you supposed to be using both of the palettes together, but honestly, like if I'm gonna do my eyeshadow, I don't pull out two or three palettes to use for my eye look. Like I just pull out the one palette I'm going to use and that's all I use. I do not pull out another palette. But it is nice, again, because the Modern Renaissance does have warmer shades. Um, it's nice to pair it with this. And then you guys saw also that this is white, but it's not like a cream or anything. It has pink duochrome. I don't know if you can you guys tell. Like, it's pink. And this shade, you guys saw also on this side, like it actually was too dark for my high, like for my brow bone. So I had to go in with the lighter shade from the Modern Renaissance. But overall, I give this palette a thumbs up. I say just try it out for yourself. Use a really, really light hand on this palette. And if it doesn't work out for you, you can always return it. I know Ulta and Sephora have really great return policies. I did hear that Anastasia wasn't accepting returns, but I don't know if they changed that. Um, just go with Ulta and Sephora just to be on the safe side because you know you can return it if you do not like it. I'm keeping my palette for now. Um, I like it. First impressions, it's it was a good one. I hope you guys enjoyed my first impressions on the Subculture palette by Anastasia Beverly Hills. If you did, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Let me know if you have tried the Subculture palette and if you have been enjoying it or disliking it. And also please subscribe if you haven't done so already and I will see you all in my next video. Bye!